Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In my last video, I assembled a 2021 version of the Ender 3 that came with a 32-bit board. It works pretty well, but I wasn't able to complete one of my test prints, which was the Eiffel Tower. This print failed two times. The first time, the magnetic print surface didn't stick well enough. Since this model requires a huge amount of retraction, the nozzle got clogged two times for different reasons. The stock Bowden setup and the plastic single gear extruder weren't good enough. When I tried to print the Arc de Triomphe, it ran out of filament after 80% of the print had been completed. Since this printer is so popular, many people have added different upgrades. I would also like to upgrade this printer to make it more user-friendly and improve the print quality. Instead of calling this improving the print quality, it would be more fitting to say letting the printer achieve the print quality it's supposed to have. Generally, a budget printer in this price range comes with a lot of cheap parts that bring down the cost. They're not too bad most of the time. They're still usable depending on what you expect from a 3D printer. But I would like to replace some stock parts that may ruin our prints. Unlike the $800 Prusa, it costs $750 and $50 shipping to the US, but it comes with high quality brand name parts that can last for years without any upgrades, and they print quite well out of the box. I will also make a few videos to review the Prusa MK3S Plus in the coming weeks. In this video, I will spend $100 to start with some simple upgrades that don't require firmware change. These are the items I'm going to add. 1. Spring Steel Sheet Print Surface I have another one with a double-sided print surface. The back is coated with powder, which doesn't stick as well as the PEI sheet when printing PLA, but it's more suitable for printing PETG. When I use the stock magnetic surface, I have to print at 25 to 30 millimeters per second for the first layer, since it does not stick as well when printing quickly. But on this PEI surface, I can print at 50 millimeters per second for the first layer without any problems. You will also get the same flat surface at the bottom of your print. There are quite a lot of different brands out there, but I bought one from Creality and two without brands. I can't see any noticeable differences between them. A double-sided spring steel sheet like this costs $35, and a single-sided sheet will cost $5 to $10 less. 2. X and Y Belt Tensioner since the printer came with a simple belt tensioner, you can still adjust the belt tension using a screwdriver, but obviously that's not the best way. If you want an easier way to do this or to adjust it while the printer is printing, you need a set of X and Y belt tensioners. I bought one set of these metal tensioners from Creality. They cost $23. 3. Capricorn PTFE Tube the Bowden tube that came with the printer is cheap. When you print at 240 degrees or higher, it will melt the inside of the heater block and clog the nozzle. The Capricorn PTFE tube is much better in quality, and I can print at 260 degrees for a long period of time without issues. If you don't have a PTFE tube cutter, you can get a bundle to make sure the cut is perfectly straight unlike the one that came with this printer. The factory didn't cut it straight, so there is a gap between the tube and the nozzle. This causes the nozzle to clog. 4. Bed Leveling Spring The stock spring is too loose, so it moves while the printer is printing. We need to replace them with some better quality ones. We can get a pack of 20 for $9. 5. Metal Dual Gear Extruder The plastic extruder that came with the printer isn't very durable, so it will crack sooner or later. 
The single gear design doesn't grip the filament as well as a double gear extruder like the one used for the CR Tennis Pro V2. A similar one can easily be found for around $20. It looks the same, but the only difference is that the one from the CR Tennis Pro V2 uses Bond Tech gears, which should last longer than this clone. It should still work much better than the stock plastic one, and we'll compare the print quality later on. 6. Filament Guide I would like to print some free upgrades. First, we will print a filament guide as the filament roll is at the top and the angle for feeding in the filament to the extruder is very steep. This requires the extruder to pull hard to feed in filament. 7. Filament Roller I would also like to print a filament roller to replace the stock one. We will add two bearings so the filament roller moves smoothly. These are just skateboard bearings, so they are very cheap. You can get a pack of 10 or 20 for a few dollars. This upgrade could also improve the feeding of filament. These are the items we need to install to this printer today. Let's start with the simple ones. For the print surface, just replace the existing magnetic print surface and you're good to go. Next, we will install our 3D printed upgrades. Then, we will install the belt tensioners. The installation is quite simple. I will start with the x-axis. Just remove the existing tensioner from the x-axis, unlock the belt from the print head, attach the new tensioner, let the belt go around it and lock it back at the print head. The y-axis is pretty much the same. Remove the existing tensioner. Removing the heated bed first will make it easier for us to unlock the belt since we also need to replace the spring later on. Attach the new tensioner. Let the belt go around it and lock it back to the print bed. Now, we can adjust the tension by turning this knob. It's much easier and can be more accurate to get the tension we want. We will install the new spring for the bed. Use some tape to secure the springs. It will make it easier for us to put it back. Remove the tape once the screws are aligned. Then put the wheels back. You may need to apply some extra pressure to let the spring push against the bed to make it completely tight. After that, we will install the Capricorn PTFE tube. In order to remove the existing Bowden tube from the hot end, you need to heat up the heating block and the nozzle. Once it reaches the temperature, and press the button on the coupler to pull out the old PTFE tube. Remove the other end from the extruder. We can use the old tube to measure the required length. I will just cut it to the exact same length. If the nozzle cools down, heat it back up again. Push the new PTFE tube all the way down to the nozzle. Make sure it reaches the bottom of the heating block and touches the nozzle. Leaving a gap will cause the nozzle to clog. We don't have to push the tube back to the extruder, as we will also replace it with a dual gear metal extruder. Take the extruder and the stepper motor apart. If you are not familiar with the structure of an extruder, you can take a few pictures before you start, so you can always switch back if there's something wrong. You need to check this carefully. If the gears of the extruder are fixed on the shaft of the stepper motor, you need to buy a new stepper motor. At some point, Creality used this type of motor and it was not the best idea. Since the gear is fixed on the motor shaft, the user can't replace it when it wears out, and this will happen sooner or later. 
Moreover, this plastic extruder isn't durable. You still have to replace it someday. If you're lucky, you may have a normal stepper motor with a longer shaft and removable extruder gear. Now, we can attach the gear of the new extruder to the stepper motor. You don't have to tighten it all the way. We still need to adjust the position later. Then put the other parts on. It's basically the same design as the stock plastic one, but we have another gear to grip the filament better and the metal extruder is more rigid and it can last much longer. We can now align the dual gear to make sure they're the same height so the filament can be gripped tightly by both gears. Now turn on the printer. We will calibrate the extruder and set the new E-steps value. Go to Configuration, Advanced Settings, and Steps per Millimeter. And for now, the E-steps of the stock extruder is 93. The recommended number of steps from the manufacturer of this extruder is 140 steps per millimeter. We can change the value to 140. Let's start with 140 and do some calibration to fine-tune the exact number. Since the filament isn't that easy to measure when it's feeded into the extruder, I would like to cut a short piece of filament around 300 millimeters long. Mark two points that are 100 millimeters apart. We can use this piece of filament to calibrate the E-steps multiple times. We can manually feed the filament into the extruder. We will start at this point where we can set half of the mark. We still need to heat up the nozzle to 200 degrees. Once the temperature reaches 200 degrees and the firmware allows us to move the extruder motor, select move 10 millimeters. Make it extrude 100 millimeters of filament. Check the mark after that. If the length is exactly 100 millimeters, you will see the second mark stops right here. In my case, it's about two millimeters short. That means it only extruded 98% of the filament I wanted. In this case, we can do 140 divided by 0 0.98, which is around 143. Set this as the new E-steps value. We can repeat the process to confirm that the gear of the extruder is extruding the exact right amount of filament. It looks perfectly fine. If there's no clogging inside the hot end and nozzle, we're all set. Now, we need to level the bed again, as the thickness of the print surface is different. Do the same paper test and level all four corners and the center. I will show you how to add the level corner feature in Marlin so the print head can move automatically to all four corners and to the center of the bed to make things easier. I will show you this in the next video, as we will add more upgrades to the printer that require some firmware changes, and we will compile our own version of Marlin. Okay, let's do a simple test print and see if the extruder is working fine. It seems the number 143 is right on. I would say the amount of filament extruded was just right. After all these upgrades are done, we are going to redo the Eiffel Tower test print. We will use the exact same settings as last time. Let's see if the printer can finish this print with all the new upgrades, including a better quality PTFE tube and extruder, which could add some improvements on filament retraction. This time, feeding the filament in is much easier. Even though this model requires a lot of retraction, the new extruder handled it nicely, and the print was finished in 10 hours without any clogging or bad extrusion. The result is pretty good, especially compared to the one printed by the Ender 5 Pro. But the one printed by the Ender 3 with a direct extruder is still slightly better. This is the advantage of a direct extruder, but the dual gear extruder with the Capricorn Bowden tube is still doing a pretty good job.
After all of these upgrades, the printer is now more user-friendly and the print quality has been improved, but that's not enough yet. I will add more upgrades to this printer in future videos. I have a pretty long list for that. Like a filament runout sensor, an auto bed leveling sensor, changing the Bowden setup to a direct drive extruder, adding a dual Z axis to provide support at both sides of the gantry, a faster 32-bit board with silent stepper drivers, adding a Wi-Fi module to send G-code files to the printer directly from Cura, replacing the pulley wheels with linear rails, and compiling a customized Marlin firmware to add more features to our printer. All these upgrades may cost a few hundred dollars, but we're going to build an Ender 3 Pro that works as good as or even better than other more expensive printers. So please stay tuned and you'll see these upgrades pretty soon. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. Where are you? Oh, you're here. It would be more fitting to say letting this printer... What am I saying?